Hello everybody, this is David. Welcome back to part two of why I believe in the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. And we are in part two of um, reason number two. And reason number two is I believe in the atoning blood of Christ because his blood lies at the heart of all the biblical revelation. Let's continue. So the sign to Noah was the bow in the cloud, the rainbow. And God said, as we read in Genesis chapter 9, verse 12 to 17, And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I would remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud. And I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. So that's the rainbow, the rainbow. So we have in Noah's sign a parallel to Adam's sign. In both, mercy and justice symbolically intermingle. The colours of the rainbow are seven. The three upper colours are red, orange and yellow. These colours are all indicated by different degrees of heat and can be seen in any fire. The lower colours are blue, purple and indigo. These are royal and heavenly colours. The central colour is green, which is brought about by the intermingling of the blue and the yellow. The symbolism is plain. The fiery colours, red, orange and yellow, typify God's justice and the heavenly colours, blue, purple and indigo, typify God's mercy. Green, resulting from the intermingling of the justice colours and the mercy colours, symbolises salvation accomplished when mercy and truth met together and righteousness and peace kissed each other at the cross. When we turn to the last book of the Bible, Revelation, we come across the rainbow again. On the throne of the eternal God, we read it in Revelation chapter 4 verse 3, there was a rainbow round about the throne which looked like an emerald. Now in this bow, the central colour, green, has overspread the whole of the rainbow. Here a perfected salvation is manifested and it is significant that the seats of the 24 elders, 12 representatives of the Old Testament saints and 12 representatives of the New Testament saints are said to be in the same position as the rainbow round about the throne. As we read in Revelation chapter 4 verse 4, and round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I, f I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. So they sit in the glory of the rainbow of a complete salvation. Only on redemption ground dare they occupy such an exalted position. To be near God, you must be in salvation. And to be within the rainbow means that they are within, they are inside salvation. They are in Christ and not outside of him. Only through the everlasting covenant of grace can they come to such a place. Through the blood alone in which justice and mercy embrace, they wear their white robes and golden crowns. In this rainbow, the other colours are lost in the one all-pervading emerald green. For in salvation, the attributes of God find their fullest 
and final harmony. Hallelujah. In the blood of Christ, the operations of the divine attributes are blended in glorious solution, a solution which solves the great question of sin. Of the harmony of the divine attributes displayed in the blood, Ralph Erskine, who was a Scottish minister from Dunfermline, who lived between 1685 and 1752, there's a lot more I could say about him, but I'll leave him for another video. <laughs> he said this, and I quote, Mercy cannot be vented without blood. Truth cannot be cleared without blood. Righteousness cannot be vindicated without blood. And peace cannot be purchased without blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, no mercy to be vented, no peace to be proclaimed. Christ has made peace by the blood of the cross. Colossians chapter 1 verse 20. A bloody husband hast thou been unto me, said Zipporah. But oh, how much more may Christ say, a bloody meeting has this been unto me. Who is that that comes from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Isaiah chapter 63 verse 1. Why? What is the matter that his garment is dyed with blood? Why, when mercy and truth meet together, they press to be so near one another in him that they press the blood out of his veins. And so it was a bloody meeting. And when righteousness and peace kissed each other, it behoved to be in Christ. And so the sword of justice behoved to pierce him through and through that so these sacred lips might meet and kiss each other in his heart. And so it was a bloody kiss. They kissed each other with such good will that Christ was, as it were, bruised between their lips, that the blood might cement and glue them together. One would think such a bloody kiss would be no pleasant kiss. No, but it pleased the Father to bruise him. They met together on a sea of blood. Thus, it was a bloody meeting. End of quote. It's quite an amazing quote. So green is also the colour which symbolises per perpetuity. In other words, evergreen, forever and ever. The fashion of this world passes away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. As we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 31, and Salvation is eternal, it never withers or decays. It is the timeless salvation of the great I am. Hallelujah. So the rainbow, as viewed by the Apostle John, was a complete circle. Now the rainbow is in reality a complete circle and can often be seen as such if the eye of the observer, as it, if, if I could put it like that, is in an elevated situation and the sun is at a low altitude. The complete circle can often be seen from elevated ground, from a, say from a hill or a mountain, or even from an aeroplane. Now on, on occasions, both primary and secondary bows can be observed as complete circles. Now as Noah viewed the rainbow from Mount Arafat, which is 16,696 feet above sea level, he must have viewed it as a complete circle. Just as in the first book of the Bible, the rainbow circle, speaking of justice meeting mercy, was displayed. So in the last book of the Bible, the rainbow circle appears again but now it is all of green for salvation is perfected. Hallelujah. The full circle symbolises eternity for it never ends. The circle never ends. So the token to Noah has its eternal manifestation in the emerald circle round about the throne in heaven. This none other than a further symbol of expiation which is making right or purging by 
blood shedding has, like Adam sign, its fullest manifestation in eternal glory in heaven forever and ever. Amen. So we'll end the video here, part two. And we'll come back in part three and have a look at Abraham. So I want to thank you for joining me in this video. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.